Hello and welcome to Spellbound. I'm your host, 32Bits. Today we're going to be taking a look at the rear end of a CD32. Uh, one that's complete with a uh, Kipper 2K riser in the back. And we're going to take a look at um, protecting this uh, riser in the back end here. You can see in the back here it's full of pins um, that are, uh, you know, soldered on here for these edge connectors. And they're all exposed. We're going to go ahead and cover that up in a way <clears throat> that's going to allow us to uh, give some protection to this. We're going to do that with a 3D printed back plate. So over here on my workbench, you may have seen in some of my other videos, I do have my uh, 3D printer here. This is a Monoprice uh, 3P uh, Mini. And the thing about it is, it is a Mini. So what that means is it has a small print bed. It's got a 120 by 120 by 120 print, uh, well, it's a 120 by 120 print bed. It'd be 120 centimeters by 120 centimeters by about 120 centimeters high. Um, this is a very actually a very nice little printer. It's got a, a heated print bed. Um, but again, the limitation of this one is that it is a little small. Most models online um, for covers for the um, CD32 and the back plate here um, are, you know, a little bit too wide. Um, so let's see, about 120 is 120, um, 120 centimeters is about that wide. So I end up with, you know, something that won't cover um, this here. So what I did is I actually took um, a model. Um, that you can find online readily, readily easily, and um, I, I built a model based off of that. Um, my model is very similar. I mean, it uses the same dimensions. This one is actually I painted with the same uh, paint that I painted uh, the mouse in another vi another video. You should check that video out. So this one, um, the way I was able to get around the uh, size limitation of my printer is you'll notice this line here, this seam. So I actually printed this out in two pieces, and one piece is about this size, and the other piece um, you know, is on this end. So when you put this on, it looks like this. And it's actually a pretty nice fit. I mean, um, it does protect the uh, the pins here, so nothing's going to go ahead and short those. It allows you to get to the rack switch. You can still get to the um, RGB port, and you can access the uh, keyboard port here very nicely. Um, and with that paint that I put on, the same paint that's on the mouse, I think it's actually a really good match. It looks nice. I actually use this for a little bit. Um, one thing I didn't like was this open-endedness here. How we'll see how. Um, I mean, just it's just open here like this, and that allows this piece to flex a lot. And I wasn't a big fan of that. So what I did was I go and went ahead and printed up another one um, that um, I redesigned a little bit. This is the uh, right side. And you notice that it's closed. It's enclosed here, um, and that what that la that that gave me was a nice enclosure there around the RGB port, and that was actually pretty good. So I went ahead and did that, and then um, I thought it would be really nice if I could. This is the uh, fourth iteration. Uh, once I get this in and I get it screwed in, oh, I also. Uh, made a hole through this the model the original model does not have that so I added a hole here so that <clears throat> a 4m bolt will actually go in there and secure it um, the original model had a little uh, catch here and then the, basically this um, you know half round here fit, fit, it fits into this hole here and then it keeps it it keeps this the uh, cover in place with pressure um, I wasn't very happy with that secure securing method so I went ahead and uh, sorted out a hole here so that we can actually put the uh, 
the uh, bolt in here, tighten it down, and then it's nice and snug up against there. It's never, it's not gonna come off. I um, mean, if you move it around, <clears throat> this is an unfinished piece. It's not, you know, painted or anything. It's just a 3D print. Again, with the seam in the middle, I had to do a little sanding here to get this to match up perfectly. But so you can see here how it fits on the uh, print bed. I'm able to print this piece and then print this piece and then put them, join them together. I actually joined this together with crazy glue. It works really good. I mean, the joint that's here, it's not going to come apart. As you can see, um, it's just as strong as the rest of the piece. So I got an SD card, um, an SD card uh, extension cable. Um, and it came in a uh, package that looks like this. Inside here is a Show what that looks like. There's a little SD card um, reader slot, and then it's got a ribbon cable, and then an SD. Well, it looks like an SD card, but it's really just something that you insert into your SD card reader, and then yeah, there's a cable, and then another reader at the other end. <clears throat> so it allows you to, it's an extension. So the idea was that I could um, have this, have the SD card. Um, at the end of this ribbon cable in the SD card reader in that's uh, connected to the terrible fire and then have this come out um, to a place where I could um, insert the card in and out um, so I could change um, the file system or add games or do whatever I wanted to do to it without having to take the thing all apart again. It's one of the things I don't like doing is continually you know unplugging and plugging the um, the riser from the edge connector you know feel, just feels like it's going to wear it out and you know just adding conditional wear onto this machine is not you know never a good idea and besides um with the um with a hole that i am putting up here with the bolt to secure it actually secures it really nicely and so again i don't want to have to take the bolt out and everything else really the only thing i need to open this up for again once i've uh, installed um the tf330 in there is to change the sd card or to update it the image on there um and so i thought an external reader would be great it's a nice opening here to allow the ribbon cable to come out and i ran it like that for a while where i had the ribbon cable hanging out and this uh, reader um, you know just hanging out here and then i could update the um, sd card by inserting it into this reader here well um then i got the notion that i could maybe incorporate that sd card reader in this space here because i put some standoffs in here so because the um, tf330 actually sets here uh, and um, was here and it was kind of flopping over so put these standoffs on if you can see those um, so it keeps it um, it keeps the card at this height and what that what that gives me is a void underneath the card um, and I measured this here and it just so happens that it's just as wide as the SD card reader so I made um, one of these one of these with a hole big enough to fit the SD card reader um, in there and that kind of works I say kind of because the SD card reader itself once you take and you know slot it in here it's a little it bulges in the middle and it's a little bit higher than this here so getting the card to getting the um, the um, TF card and the riser to fit back into the back of the CD32 with that reader in this space here um, was a little tricky but what I noticed was when I was um, trying to fit this um, in there that the, the case here um, was coming apart um, because it was a little thicker like I was saying in the middle and uh, when I was pushing it all together I noticed that there's like a little there's a seam on this and I was able to get a screwdriver in there and pop it open and um, this is what it looks like so this is the what the card reader looks like at the end and usually the uh, cable sticking out there and if I just pop it open you can see that's what that little case looks like. And the idea was that I was going to have this, find the right one, fit 
in this void space underneath the 330 and you'd be able to you'd be able to insert your SD card in the side here so it'd be like this and you'd be able to insert an SD card inside there well I don't know if you can see it but what happens is this is a little bit too high so when like I said when I was inserting this in and out and taking it out this case actually this little case here started coming apart it was, it was just a little crack in the end so I was able to stick a very thin screwdriver in I was able to pop that open just pops open there's a couple catches you know, after I got it open, I noticed <clears throat> there's actually only a couple catches. There's four, you know, two here and two here. That if you if you were to just that's a better shot. If you were to just push a you know a screwdriver in there, they just pop open. That snaps back together. Yeah. So what that allows me to do is that allowed me to um, redesign. So again, this is our two parts here. Um, what you notice here is that there's a plate here and this plate hides the void um, because once I so what I ended up doing is I ended up taking the reader out of the case and so once you get the reader out of the case it's just a a little PCB I'll show you what that looks like So here's the actual reader on the little circuit board outside of the case that we just took out. It's the same case, same as the case I showed you before. So what this allows me to do is to go ahead and put this um, card reader in that void space underneath the uh, TF330 card. So we can access it from the side here. I'll show you what that looks like. So that's what it looks like there once it's inserted um, and I had created that little that little plastic plate to go over it because I didn't want it to be exposed so this actually snaps in there and then it's covered so we basically recreate that case but it's at a height as you can see that it sits well underneath the, um, the card when it goes in there Again, here are the here is the top of the of the reader, the reader, the new reader case, and here's the top of the RGB port hole, so that the card fits right on top of that, and it stays nice and secure in there because it has the back, you know, the backing pegs, and we can access our SD card. So let's see what that looks like. Of course, that's the extension, but you get the idea. So now what we're able to do is to um, run this cable. It actually bends very nicely. Just bend it this way, and then I bend it this way. And then this part obviously goes inside the CD32. So I'm going to go ahead and put that together and show you what that looks like all together um, and connected. So here's the um, expansion card on the riser outside of the uh, CD32. I've gone ahead and um, pulled, you know, pulled it off the back. And I'm just going to go ahead and eject the SD card. We'll hold that aside. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert the expansion extension sorry extension cable okay, hear that click there now I'm going to reinsert this into the CD32 and um, use the cable with the reader on the side there oh one other thing um, 
you do need to get a longer bolt. You can't use the standard bolt that comes with um, the normal back plate if you have it. Um, I just picked this up at the hardware store. It's a, a 4M-0.7 uh, by 30 millimeters. So it's a 30 millimeter. <clears throat> um, the standard one's about half the size. It's probably like uh, 20. Um, it's a 15 or a 20 millimeter. You need a 30 millimeter, <clears throat> millimeter bolt so that you can go all the way through the riser into the into the bolt hole here and then you know make sure they get all the way through the uh, plastic here <clears throat> to securely hold it and then what I like to do is I like to just clean it up by putting a, um, a cap cover over um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, install those and then we'll take a look and see what that looks like Oh yeah, before I forget, um, I always enclose or put a plastic bag or anti-static bag over over the um, SD card reader in, on these terrible fire cards because I don't want that shorting out or anything. Now, because I have the because I have the cable coming out the side, I can't just slip the bag over it. So what I have to do is I take the, my normal bag that I have here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the sides. Just tore it down the side. Just opened up the side here, and then that way I can slip it over the card, the SD card reader adapter. And the <clears throat> the cable can hang out the side. So I'll go ahead and insert this into the back. C32. With the cable. Out the back. Find it easier to Stand it up on its end to do this part. Now we have the extension cable that's coming out the back. And, and the other one that I've I recently did, I the one that I just did, um, I have this fold in here and here and then I have actually some tape securing it so that the um, that the ribbon cable stays there. I'm going to go ahead and do that um, on this one too after. And this cable is kind of long. It's, it's 40, 40 centimeters I believe and I'm looking at getting a smaller one. Um, exactly how small you know or big I need it I don't know but for now I just feed this in past Feed it on in until it gets in there. And then snap the cover in place on the bottom. got the cable fed in there and the side clip in and this pushed all the way in I can go ahead and put my bolt in yeah I'm using these uh, covers here just to make it look nice dress it up so it's not just a 
bolt cap, you know, bolt end sticking out there. You can still get to the, you can still get to it by, um, by just snapping the cap open. great part is we can go ahead and insert our SD card and then when we want to change um, update it or anything like that we can just take it outside now this this design, this is like the best place I could find to put it so that I can include it inside the uh, housing here without having to, you know, put some external, something external on the outside. Like I said, originally I just had the cable here um, kind of hanging out because there's this little bit of a slot here, void here. Now this gets covered with the, um, the keyboard connector. You don't really see this, but I had it hanging out here so that the reader was kind of hanging out here but it was really bulky and I didn't like it um, so this I think this um, design is much better um, able to just you know pop that card in and out on the side <clears throat> now when the card is out it does um, kind of get in the way of the power switch as you see it's right there you can still switch it if you wanted to um, and you know you could just pop it out if, when you turn it on you won't have you know won't boot from the seat from the um, SD it'll just look for the CD so it's one way to do it but um, it is kind of in the way when you do that um, but for the most part it's always going to be in anyway so you know you, you can just you can you can just flip that up I think it actually works really well I think it's a good solution um, and I think it looks really good. That's the other thing. You know, I think the pa I think it makes a, a really nice package um, because once it's buttoned up, um, it just kind of looks like it's it's you know part of the part of the unit. There's that um, same gray paint I used on the um, the mouse, and I'm um, actually pretty happy the way it came out. Even with the seam there, you don't really see it too much. I did sand this one, um, and it's got two coats of that paint on it. And I think it looks pretty good. All in all, I'm pretty happy, and uh, actually very happy about you know having a nice, nicely secured um, cover on there, and uh, also being able to access that really easily by just popping that SD card in. Well, there you have it, folks. There's my take on the Kipper 2K riser cover with integrated SD card reader. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a like. And if it's your first time here, please take a moment to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave a comment below. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video and have a great day.